Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the War of the Spark and the uniqueness of it having every single pack having one Planeswalker and whether or not you should buy this set. People are selling Ultimate Masters for very close to very close to what they're buying it at. So that tells me that people are preparing, including stores and big box retailers, are preparing to for this War of the Sparks, which is targeting towards casual players. What do I mean by casual players? I mean, we have a set, Dominaria, and that set had 60-plus legends. What do casual players like? They like legends. Okay, good. What else do casual players like? They like guilds. Okay, let's go back to Ravnica for the third time. What do casual players like? They like planeswalkers. Okay, let's make a set of planeswalkers. And the fascinating part, when I look at the two Ravnica sets, um, and this being the third set, typically the third set isn't as strong. And especially when we look at Dragon Maze, that was one of the weakest sets we've ever seen. This set will not be printed that much. It won't be drafted as much because of where it is positioned. And the fact that it has 36 Planeswalkers is interesting. Um, also, the timing of it, it. I don't expect very much of this to be drafted or opened. So what I'm saying is there might be an opportunity to go ahead and buy a box. Now, I've been very, very anti-box speculation. Um, if you guys watch this channel, you know I don't like to speculate on any new boxes. Old boxes, Innistrad or Odor are more interesting in my opinion. But when you buy a box, you have to you have to wait until it doubles in price and then you made a little bit of profit. So it's not like, oh great, it went up $10. Nah, no, shipping fees and the fact that you know scams, 1% of all transactions and Magic the Gathering, I would believe, is a scam, having been a local card shop myself. And still being a local card shop, I can tell you scamming is very prevalent, as is loss of goods. I think this is a great opportunity. Um, and it's kind of like the whole EDH opportunity, where 90, not, 90 to 95% of the Magic player base will never go to a GP. They will never go to a FNM. They will never go to a pre-release especially a midnight one but they love planeswalkers they love it they love collecting them and i know because one of our number one products is these crappy intro decks and they don't make sense to me like as someone who has a magic store it's fascinating like what sells and what doesn't sell things that i personally like we don't stock anymore because it doesn't sell like older boxes, they don't sell. But these Planeswalker decks are incredibly popular, even if the Planeswalkers are very bad. And that's my conclusion here is the 36 Planeswalkers don't even have to be good. All of them can be bad, and this set could still be one of the most valuable sets. Because just like, you know, a Pikachu or a Squirtle, those things always sell for a quarter or 50 cents. It doesn't matter if the Pikachu is good or not. People just like them. So the same commonality. So the, the reality of owning a store is very different from you know what I expected. I'm actually just selling Legos now. I don't know why. I don't know how. But we carry Legos. Uh, these Lego mystery bags. We buy them for $1.50 to $2 a piece. They sell anywhere between $4 to $6 for the Zoom Zooms. In fact, I even know what a Zoom Zoom is to tell you all you need to know about where the store currently is. I expected just to carry like, you know, high-end magic product, almost like other YouTubers where they're fancy, you know, old sets. And, you know, I was expecting all these dual lands to come in my store so I can buy them for 80% and then flip them very quickly. And that never happened. We sell Pokemon tins, we sell Legos, and we sell Planeswalker decks. And I'm very excited for the Planeswalker deck because I know that will sell. Anything else? I don't know. Mox Amber? I don't know. Con 
You know, like that's not the type of product that a casual player or an ordinary Magic player would even be interested in. An ordinary Magic player is interest, interested in the Pikachus and Squirtles and Charizards. So it doesn't matter what the Charizard looks like. It's just got to be a Charizard and you can sell the card for a few dollars. And that's the same with Planeswalker. It doesn't matter what the Planeswalker looks like. So I've sold some terrible Planeswalkers and people still buy up because it's cheap. It's iconic. And it's very easy for them to buy. It's easy for them to mentally say, hey, I want to buy this Planeswalker deck. And I take the, you know, for for instance, if they want to spend seven bucks, I'll sell them the, just the Planeswalker deck. I get to keep the code. And, you know, maybe they get one pack or two packs. I don't know. Those things are only going to increase in value. I made a very big bet on Planeswalkers, especially the uh, Ravnica Planeswalkers, because of the MTG Arena codes in them. So the only way for you to get these cards are MTG Arena codes. You couldn't actually open that Planeswalker via a ordinary booster pack that you would use the gems and the coins and all that fun stuff to get. So I'm I'm hedging. Like I'm saying that's a gamble. And I will take a gamble on more of the spark. This is the first product that I look at and I say I can actually sell this product. It makes sense from a store perspective. You can buy tons of planeswalkers in. So your ability to buy planeswalkers is really easy now. Uh, one of the things that I had trouble with in my store was the best collection that came in was worth $400. An average collection is worth like $50, and the person wants $400 for it. You, I don't get dual lands. I don't get legacy staples. I don't get reserve list cards. Like The closest I've had to something valuable is the four people who want to sell collector's edition to me, which is a terrible, terrible investment. It's just like I can't imagine a worse investment this time than a collector's edition, especially one that has been shaved. The corners have been cut, and now Card Kingdom won't pay you any money for that. So I'm excited, and I will be buying lots of this product. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say that I'm not interested in the Modern Horizons. Uh, I can't sell Modern Horizons. I can't move it. There's started things in my e-commerce store in my retail store i know i can sell i can sell pokemon tins the tin itself is beautiful especially the evs and the uh the ev loosens like their tins are just gorgeous looking tins people buy them all the time because it's very appealing for parents to buy their kids and then like as a kind of storage unit if you will planeswalker decks they sell especially the two ravnica ones so there's actually four there's uh, Vraska, Raul Izzet, and then there's the other two that I'm forgetting right now. I think, what's the other, the Gruel one? Anyway, there's two blues and two yellows. I have a lot of yellows. I'm going to accumulate a lot of blues. I'm betting that that code will become valuable in the future. And you might be like, oh, it will never become valuable in the future because it's just this wildly printed set and... I don't think that many of those things exist. I think Planeswalker decks do not exist in the capacity that most people think they do. And I think the demand for them is actually much higher. And I have studied it, um, at least in my area. I would have never expected these things to sell. But they're the only things that are selling. Booster packs don't sell well. Boxes sell terribly. Because uh, the first thing someone thinks of is, oh, let me buy a box online. I think it also has to do with the shipping fee. So um, when you buy boxes online, you have free shipping. But when you're buying these Planeswalker decks, maybe you don't. And you normally want to buy them in twos. So if you want to buy Vraska, you'll buy Ral Is It as well. And the codes, that's the key. I didn't even know these things had codes until like a customer told me that's why he wanted to buy so many. But you're only allowed to use one. So the codes are unique. They're redeemable. They're different. But you can only use one code per deck per account. So it's not like you buy four Vraska starter kits and then you get four of each of those things. But anyway, if you want to follow my adventure, uh, follow my blog. I will have vlogs on this channel of our daily card shop life. 
and there will be editing, and that's why we got this very fancy editing computer. And I'm committed to it. I'm fully committed to it. I have the time. I have the staff. I think you're going to really enjoy the rest of the staff. And basically, it was a negotiation for me to stay on with this company instead of me leaving for a different company, a different executive job. They would have to、uh, make the office version. We're going to call it the startup. And it'll just be like an office parody, because a lot of actually crazy stuff go- is going on. My sister's,、um, I don't know what my relationship to him would be, but anyway, he's like a teenager, and then he's going to like stay over in my home for five days, and he's <laughs> he's just like a high school teenage magic nerd, and he's very excited.、Um, so I will definitely film some of that because. Uh, we do have summer interns coming in, and they've been a blast. We had a summer intern from University of Houston, and then we had one from、uh, who took a lot of pictures of me in the events that we did.、Uh, those pictures from the mall,、uh, that was him, and that's from Emory. So this, we're actually looking for interns right now to make an office environment. I think you have to at least have like these characters, right? These new characters, these repeating characters. Um, given the day to day of my operations, it is very office like in terms of a startup, where you no know, every day is so unique. Anyway, bye guys.